For us, it is an honor to have you around here. Our wish is that the secrets of the sages of ancient India, taught by the renowned Yogi Sadguru, be a powerful tool of self-transformation in your inner journey. Get to know our yoga course by clicking on the link that is in the description of this video and learn more. Uh, just the questions? There's one more question, we'll close because I think uh, it's webcast and they have some issue at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Namaskaram Sadhguru, here's another question from someone online specifically asking about enlightenment. You spoke about different levels of realization mm -hmm. and enlightenment. How far can a regular human <laughs> like me go? <laughs> <laughs> is there an individual limit for each of us as to how much we can grow in this lifetime? And why aren't we naturally born enlightened? Oh. <laughs> See, enlightenment is not an achievement. Let's first get that straight, it's not an achievement. It's a homecoming. Because you throw your desires out there, you're running away. If you stop throwing that, life will come home because that's where it is. It's not about getting somewhere, it is about losing the need to get somewhere. You don't have any need to go anywhere, to become anything, you just sit here, everything is fine. But at the same time, you're involved and dynamic. You are not lazy, you are not arriving at a philosophy because you are lethargic. No, you are full of life, but you have no personal need to go anywhere. If you have to go to Timbuktu, you will go there. If you have to go to another planet, you will go there if there is something to do. But you have no personal need to go anywhere. Why this need has come is, as I told you, in the very beginning, <laughs> another regular person asked this question <laughs> So, uh, it doesn't matter where you are, what kind of activity you are in, the concern, the bother of you are not being fulfilled is always there with you. You found a new job, like that. You got married, full of dancing, three days later <laughs> Not necessary, I'm not trying to make everything negative. Everything is like this. You got there and you talk, thought, this is it, and then after some time you find still there are concerns of being fulfilled. Always people keep telling you, the next thing will fulfill you, the next thing will fulfill you, it goes on. But once you've thrown this, these things come looking for you. Once you've thrown out one desire, they understand this guy is in the trap. They keep throwing so many things from all over. You can call it the marketing mechanism in the world, your parents, your friends, your wife, your husband, your children, all kinds of people keep drawing into more and more things. Well, it's very important for the market economy, you should do more and more, buy more and more, take more and more loans. The interest rate has gone down, you can take more loans uh, Somebody had a baby? Snake, it's okay, it's only a baby, lots of them are here, sit down, it's okay. Nothing, they won't do nothing to you. A baby means, ladies, what you must do, take him in your hand and <laughs> It's a baby. There are plenty of them, this is the season, so they're okay. Don't think they're intruding into the darshan. No, it is their place, we are sitting on top of them. So, so once you throw out one stone, they come looking for you. This happened. Uh, that 
two schoolboys went camping. And then they found, they were not very well equipped and they found mosquitoes and mosquitoes biting. They tried to cover themselves and sleep but mosquitoes kept biting them here, there, everywhere, you know how mosquitoes are? You cover your feet, they'll bite your cheek, if you cover your cheeks, they bite your feet. <laughs> you had that experience. So, uh, they were struggling and then after some time unable to manage this, they opened their eyes and looked around, then they saw some fireflies. Then one guy said, we better give up, now they've come with torches looking for us <laughs> This is how it is, this is called credit rating. Once you do one thing, they will try to spike you from every side. So having enough sense, how much time, how much energy, how much interest do I have in these things to engage myself? I'm not telling you only this much or that much, but you must make a judgment according to your requirement. You should not do like somebody else, according to your requirement. Even to arrive at this, you must be little away from everything for some time. If you come here and do one week of sadhana, we'll give you some special sadhana for each one of you. You sit here one week, silent, still. When you're very still and clear in your head, no any kind of compulsions, make a decision how much is needed in your life. Go by that. You don't have to go by my ways of doing things. By your way, right now you're not going your way. You're just being driven just by anybody and everybody. Commercial agencies are driving you, that's not fair. Hello? Commercial agencies are deciding what you should do, what you should not do, how much loan you should take, all this, no. You decide how much is needed for you. Don't be in competition with somebody because that's not the way life works. Life is about consciousness not about concerns, not about competition, not about coercing yourself or somebody else to do something. Life is about being conscious. Only if you're conscious, we can label you the regular lady <laughs> as a human being. Otherwise you're a human creature driven by compulsions. Hmm? So, wonderful to have all of you here, but uh, there was also that part of that question, what is enlightenment, how, whatever, whatever. Let me… <laughs> let me read a little poem for you. Hmm? This is called Salt Doll. You might have read this before probably. Salt Doll. In search of truth did I go back and forth. Wandered through mountains, bathed in rivers sacred with the pious. Whichever way the blind pointed with hope and zest, me traveled. Every which way I smelled the scent, but round and round is all I went. Wasted lives to know the one who is not, but the feverish pitch of seeking would cease not. What does it take? to fathom the ocean, even fish or whale is clueless of the ocean. It is only the salt that can be ocean. A salt doll I became, just a plunge made me the ocean. So I'm… Uh, you know I'm not prejudiced against women? You know that or no? If you know that only I will speak, otherwise I'll… Yes. In this process, in the very beginning we were talking about how even a fetus anchors you in such a way that you are helplessly… it's not a choice anymore. So in that process, a woman is lot more anchored to her physicality than a man because Without that, probably our mothers would have thrown us out of the window. 
only because of that anchor that no matter what we did, you know, it carried on. You know, you were quite terrible, <laughs> huh? But still she did all that because she was also helpless, connected, beyond, beyond conscious wish connected. So that is fine, that is the structure of life. But you shouldn't get into that pattern, you must know when to work yourself out of that, particularly women. Because you can go on endlessly with the same concerns to the last breath. This unfortunately is true with a large segment of women. Not that men are all enlightened something, I'm just saying <laughs> there is a little biological factor which makes you like that, always little concerned about your body, always little concerned about your physiological framework. So you have to be little more, little more on sadhana than men. Because biology takes little more tearing to release you. It won't release you so easily, it has a grip on you in a certain way. This is natural process, it's not your mistake. It's a natural process to see that the race perpetuates, the species perpetuates. I must tell you this because on this day it's important. When uh, in 1996, now by December that time, the time that Viji had fixed for herself is coming close, I'm trying to play the woman's role and tell her, you know, you still have a child, seven-year-old, I'm okay, but the girl, she's only seven. Not yet seven at that time, few months short of seven. You can postpone it. I'll support you, some other time you can do it, not now, the girl is only seven. Then she said, it's <laughs> way beyond her normal wisdom. She said, see as a mother, everything that I can do, I have done for her as a little girl, as a child. But what I see is, now she's only seven, but I see the way she is, her intelligence, her way she's moving around with you. I know there is nothing more I can add. I've given her love, I've given her comfort, I absolutely love her, but I see that I don't think I can contribute anything more to her. Only thing I will do is trying to entangle her with me. I… I just bowed down to her. I said, this is too much wisdom. <laughs> this is too much for a woman with a seven-year-old girl to say, then I said, I have no argument for this. Well, uh, I'm just saying, there have been many great women, probably in these parts of the world, that kind of thing was not encouraged or if they were there, they never came to light. I'm sure they were there, but they never came to light because they were suppressed or they were obscure. But in the East, there are many thousands of women in the past who rose as great sages and saints, different in their way of operation, but they rose, nobody could stop them because the culture allowed it, the society allowed it. I think today all societies in the world largely except unfortunately a few, which you are not a part of anyway, this is the time. This is the time for the woman to rise in such a way because it's unfortunate that we have put them in competition with men. I can also grow muscles. Are this is not the area in which you should compete. Men will say, wow, muscles, they look at you up and down, behind your back this <laughs> Because they know what muscle is, please understand this. Doesn't matter how much muscle you build they will be laughing behind you. That is not the way to compete. 
physical bodies are different, what's wrong with that? What is wrong in male and female bodies being different, that's the way it should be. But this is why spirituality is important, because in this domain there is no male-female. When we say… Sp when we say body, there is female and male. When we say spirit, there is no male-female. This is where you must compete. This is where you must rise. This is where you must reach your fullness, so that in today's world, you cannot be obscure, you will be visible. If wisdom arises within you, you will be visible, nobody can stop you anymore, those days are gone. So you are in that privileged generation of women. Probably I would say this is the very first generation where there is such a privilege that if you rise in your consciousness, you will immediately be recognized, which was not so for thousands of years, not been so. This is the first time it's so. Make the best out of it. Thank you very much.
Uh, wait, wait. A, a conscious city, can you hear me? A conscious city has a spiritual possibility. I think its time is overdue, it needs to happen in the world. This is just a small beginning and uh, every one of you, in what ways you can participate. I don't believe in imposing anything on anybody, but if you think it's precious, if you think it's valuable for humanity, you do what you can and each one of you, I think they can send you an email ID where you can write and say, in what ways you will participate so that we know how to reach out to you, okay? It is… it is according to your willingness, it can't be done by force. But if we do not create such spaces, I want you to… I want you to take a walk in uh, downtown San Francisco. No, don't laugh, it'll come everywhere. It'll come everywhere because you are misunderstanding the power of chemicals. You're misjudging the power of chemicals. Once they enter, this is how it will be. Human beings will be turned into rags. So, let's not that turn this country into that and in turn in the world into that thing that human beings live like rags, dirty rags on the street. If that needs to happen, we must show, your faces should display that living consciously is a far bigger kick than any intoxicant. You must be… you must be my billboard. If people see you, they must ask, what are you on? That's how you should live. That is the basis of… <laughs> he is already convicted by you. Does he need to be convinced also? You don't convince a prisoner, all right? <laughs> so, it's important this needs to be done at this time. This is not about in counter to something negative happening. It's important that generation of people are absolutely for life, that we don't turn against life within ourselves by thinking something else is better than life. There is nothing else better than life. And life does not mean food, life does not mean physical pleasures, life does not mean this and that, life means allowing this to flower, allowing this to overflow in exuberance. This must happen, this must happen. In our gen generation, we must see that it happens to maximum number of people because as individuals and societies and the world gets empowered with tremendous possibilities, if there is no human beings with sense, if there is no human beings with a deep commitment to the well-being of life, all these technologies, all these great possibilities will only turn against human beings. Yes. We have that responsibility as a generation who is enjoying maximum amount of technological benefits. We also have the responsibility to create the most responsible and stable generation of people. Otherwise, these same tools which are making our lives will take away our lives. Let's make it happen.